Hello and welcome to session one of our Risk Control for Mid-Level Managers series. Today's session is entitled Back to Basics. So the first Back to Basics begins with risk management and risk control. And what do they mean? So we have risk management that identifies what's out there and we have risk control that attempts to mitigate those through various methods that we could employ. We utilize those in the form of policies, procedures, and enforcement to then help us to develop what we know as a safety culture. The safety culture is by design and it's for the protection of all within the organization. Training, policies, and equipment are all aids used to develop that, sa that safety culture. We talk about doing a rig check and why are rig checks important? We're not just, we don't want to just pencil whip a rig check. Uh, because that documentation becomes valuable and it shows a pattern, uh, a pattern of a proactive approach to, to checking our vehicles. And in this particular case, um, this uh, apparatus was taken out for repair and on its way back uh, from repairs, uh, the mechanic was actually driving the apparatus and the apparatus took an erratic left-hand turn across the center line and struck a family uh, driving in their vehicle, struck the vehicle head on and all occupants of both vehicles were killed, including the mechanic who was driving the fire apparatus. And your first inclination is, well, you know, did something medical happen to the driver that he, he made the erratic left-hand turn across the center line, and that all came back negative, didn't suffer a medical event, wasn't on the influence of anything, anything like those types of things. Uh, so then it becomes a, a more of a mechanical issue. So from a mechanical issue, the very first thing they do is they start to pull maintenance records. Uh, how often is a vehicle maintained? Who maintains it? Who looks at this? How often is it checked? And this is how our rig checks when they went back through and they looked at the documentation of the paperwork for this particular apparatus. Every time it had anything that was changed on the vehicle, tires, brake adjustments, anything that was added up to and including in this particular case, if the mechanic would replace wiper blades because that was a visibility slash safety issue, he would document when he replaced the wiper blades on the vehicle. So suffice to say, there was sufficient evidence that that vehicle was very well maintained by the department. So now it became an issue where we really had to look and dig for root cause. What caused this vehicle to take an erratic left-hand turn? Well, in that particular manufacturer, that apparatus and that style of apparatus, there was a malfunction that day that was a mechanical issue that was, that was not known to the, to the owners, to the department. So it caused the transmission to lock up, which in turn was led to a mechanical issue of a left or right hand turn. So in that particular situation, the department, uh, basically by virtue of having documentation and tracking everything they've ever done and maintaining files in that apparatus, showed a proactive approach to maintenance and everything that they've ever done. And that eventually was subrogated and went back to the manufacturer of the apparatus. When we do things right, which we do most of the time, that things are done right, um, we, we don't know. So, you, you know, we do those rig checks and we save someone's life because the equipment that was used worked, um, it's, it's no big deal. We don't hear about it. Uh, I, I think often of fires, you go to fires and a smoke detector sounds and you get there and the fire's small and the fire department is able to extinguish the fire quick. There's very little, little damage. And the news will show up and like leave because there's no story here. There's no story. Well, there's a big story here. There's a big story, a piece of equipment worked as it was supposed to. It saved lives. It limited damage. Um, all the responders went home safe. All the people in the home were safe. Uh, it, it's a big story, but it doesn't. It's not dramatic. It doesn't. It doesn't get people's attention. Um, so we, we want you to keep doing those right. To keep doing those things. Checking your rigs. Uh, doing the proper patient care. If something doesn't sound right, question it. Uh, what's going on here? Because um, the outcome will be a good sound decision. It'll be something right for not only people in our organization, but all those that we protect as well. In our organizations, a lot of folks wonder, and again, when we bring this up in the, in the program, they wonder what risk management, what risk control has to do with their agency. But again, identifying what the hazards are and developing methods to deal with them help our safety and safety culture. Uh, with the policies and procedures, as Dave mentioned, policies and procedures are some of our best friends to mitigate uh, risk. 
we have to identify and define expectations for our staff to be able to follow. Why do we have policies that assist us with driving? Why do we have policies that assist us with uh, scene safety, different things like that? Why do we have a backing policy? Why do we have policies for in and around the station? These are all effective methods to help enforce and develop our safety culture. As Dave said, it takes time to develop it, but it also takes enforcement. That's where the mid-level managers come in. They help to enforce those policies and to educate those that are unaware or unsure of what the policy actually means. The design of a safety culture is for safety for all. So thank you for watching session one where we got to the basics of risk management and safety culture. In part two, we will take you into officer selection and what's going to be needed to make strong officers to continue with the vision of the organization and their safety culture.